Hey everyone, Steven with Dam Saltwater Fishing. What's going on? Y'all, this may look familiar to some of y'all. This is actually Navarre Pier. We're about to get on there and go do some fishing. I like to make these intros short, sweet, to the point, but I do like to show you what I'm using. And it's my Spanish setup with a small little half ounce white loony jig, some 50 pound mono. Absolutely love using those jigs. But you never know what you're gonna catch springtime fishing here on the beautiful panhandle of Florida. Let's get out there. Water's beautiful. Can't wait to fish. <laughs> See what we catch. Let's get going. South, southeast wind. This is perfect conditions for mackerel fishing. Go fly away. <laughs> Made it to the end. I'm gonna go soak a cigar, man. I'll try to find a king mac or a Spanish. We'll see, the water's beautiful. There's one. A pretty little spanner. Not much size to them, but they are. That one I'll, that one I'll throw in the cooler. Let's bring them up. Yeah, that's a perfect average size Spanish right there check that out yeah it is that's a good eater cool all righty y'all got a nice little spanish mackerel he's going to go bled out and in the cooler these are delicious eating you can tell they're spanish mainly by that front dorsal so they do have some teeth he ate this little nomad ridgeback jig 40 gram in that sardine color let's throw them on ice and y'all see them teeth you do not want to stick your finger in that mouth and a good pair of pliers helps a lot because those things are sharp. But the colors on these are gorgeous. Check out that fast forked tail. They can swim incredibly quickly. Really good eyesight. And that's just meant for eating minnows and squid. So literally all I have here is this Nomad Ridgeback jig in the sardine color, 40 gram. It's practically one and a half ounces. I've rigged this up with about two foot of 50 pound mono leader. You get a lot more bites in this clear water that way. You can throw wire, but it's it's not as productive. Now, I am throwing this on a seven foot star aerial rod. This is a medium heavy fast action. And then you may have noticed, this is just a little fun reel. This is a vintage pin 712Z. I'm sure uh, maybe some of y'all out there, your grandfather or someone has used it before, or maybe you even use one. This thing's over 30 years old and still going strong. It's a little noisy it's not as refined as my die was in shimano's but it gets the job done so let's get this jig back out there and see if we can pull in some more spanish mackerel i just like to make a real long cast and then let that jig or spoon bucktail whatever you're using i like to let it fall to the bottom unlike a gotcha plug or bubble rig where i'm working it as soon as it hits the water i want this thing to sink because that's where that flash comes from on the fall. Once it hits the bottom, I'm gonna reel it up fairly quick, just to where it comes below the surface. And then I'm gonna open that bell and let it fall back down again. Every now and then I'll go jig it up a little bit, you know, give it some twitches with that rod, so like this. But mainly, you just want something shiny out there and resembles the bait that they're eating are these tiny little glass minnows and small squids. So let's see if we can catch some more here. Hmm. all right see if he's hooked in the mouth this time <laughs> all right come come on close it's another spanish mackerel Let's see if he's actually hooked good and i can bring him up all right here we go i'll swing him over it's a keeper all right there we go another spanish Get them in the cooler. I'm getting a lot of bites. My leader's a little afraid. I'm gonna cut that down a couple inches and retie. Got two in the cooler. Let's see if we can turn it into three. Oh, there he is. Did he grab it? Yep. <laughs> he grabbed it when I was letting it fall. Another Spanish. There's one falling behind of it too. See, these things run in fairly big schools. These seem to all be relatively the same size. So we can get him up. He looks like he's hooked fairly good. As soon as I said he was hooked fairly yeah. good. <laughs> That's why I like the lighter jigs, because they don't pull out of their mouth as easy. I'm gonna throw in a little 
half ounce bucktail here. When you throw a heavy spoon like this, a lot of times the weight will counteract you fighting the fish and it'll pull these hooks out. So we're gonna switch to a little single hook jig. Now we got the smaller jig on. This is a half ounce. I call them a loony jig because they used to be tied by a man of Terry Looney and his dad. But it's just a little half ounce white nylon jig. Uh oh, okay. Doesn't cast as far as a spoon, but maybe the hookup ratio will be a little better. And I just work it the same way. Oh, see, they still like it. Hmm. Come on, that little white jig will catch anything that swims in salt water. Just bring you up. Boom, that's a keeper. All right, they're pretty fish. <laughs> Just landed in another nice one. On, I switched to that little half ounce loony jig. Got a nice Spanish mackerel. Let's bleed them out, throw it on ice. If you ever catch Spanish mackerel, don't forget your towels like I did today. They are full of scales tiny little bitty scales and a lot of blood but they're fun to catch and good to eat when fresh let's keep on fishing this is what i love doing this time of year just fishing for spanish mackerel i'm gonna see if i can catch a few more and then maybe throw a cigar minnow back out there and trying to find a little bit bigger fish because where they're spanish the king should be hanging around too it's fun fishing with this little vintage reel perfect for this type of fishing Seems to be the best. Oh, there's one. Oh, came out of the water. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's bring another Spaniard back up on the pier. That's an average size keeper. Beautiful fish. The patterns and colors on them are awesome, but they are very bloody. Looks like I painted my jig red, don't it? <laughs> there we go. Another fish on deck. There we go. Got that out. I saw a little baby cobia down there. Get out there. There we go. There you are. Are you hooked in the mouth? It looks like it. That's a little bit better one. Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, it's not bad. It's fun on this stuff. All right, man. Are you going to hop off or are you going to come up on deck? I think we'll swing them over. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good little spot. <laughs> it bleeds them out for me. <laughs> All right, another... Spanish mackerel on the jig. Jig's still holding up. That mono leader, I'm gonna have to put on some more because that's pretty frayed up. But that's a beautiful little fish. Look at the colors on them. Those yellow dots. Teeth, you don't want to stick your finger in their mouth. A pair of pliers is very handy for these fish. This is a mono leader I'm using. This is just some Andy 50 pound mono. You can buy this whole spool. It's 250 yards of line for really cheap. Take you about two foot off, and there's you a perfect leader for Spanish mackerel. Small mahi mahi when they show up. You can even catch jacks and stuff on it because they don't have teeth. But I like cheap stuff for Spanish mackerel because you're going to get cut off. It's inevitable. Might as well not lose your good stuff. Now, kings, I'm using wire because they got some teeth that you can land it on them if they're in the right place, but those. Those teeth are of size to cut right through this. Spanish and bluefish, on the other hand, normally you'll be good, but you just want to make sure you retie like I'm doing. Take that extra time, because see how frayed up that thing is? You'll most likely lose the next fishy hook. And I don't use any hardware tying my leader to my braid. I do a double uni knot. If you're not comfortable doing a line to leader knot, do the tiniest black barrel swivel you can. Don't use anything silver or gold, because they're going to hit that instead of your lure. So I've got a fresh knot fresh leader and then that same jig i've been catching the fish on let's get it back out there we go a good school of them out here oh yeah i love it. yeah i don't know i like i like pier fishing about you know april oh see that spanish just sky on that <laughs> oh that was a good one there 
<clears throat> one of them came back for it <laughs> it's fun seeing them especially if you have polarized sunglasses you can see down in the water and watch them chase your bait there we go another nice little spanner working towards a limit fish here bring you up boom <laughs> at least they're biting good all right another one for the cooler i might let me see you got five bucks <laughs> i'm just messing with you 15 cents yeah i got one that's because you subscribe <laughs> now if i lose all mine i'm gonna want that back There he goes. Good school of them. As soon as I made another cast. <laughs> He's coming in pretty easy. There we go. Yeah, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> See if I can get him up. All right. Another Spanish. Instant catch. It's not like that all the time, but when it is, it's fun. Fun and exciting, and you want to get on them while you can. And there's water hoses on these piers. Because I sure as heck need it. Don't be like me, bring a towel. It's funny, I sell some towels on my shop. And uh, I just failed to bring one in my bag. It's always something when I drive out of state, I always forget something. I don't know why. Military and me used to pack things to a T, and now it's just like, since I don't have to, I don't. <laughs> if you know, you know. It's a lot better. All right, let's get back out there. I look forward to it, though. That means you've had a good day. When you got a bloody cooler and scales all over you, you did some catching, not just staring at water. I'm glad I got to break in this new reel. It's new to me reel. 45 bucks. All it needed was grease. Oh, come on. There you are. Another one on the loony jig. I mean, it's instant action. Does he have any followers behind him? I don't think so. All right, Spaniard. Get up here. <laughs> another fish on deck. There's another fish, y'all. You're allowed to keep 15 of these jokers. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm working towards my limit. That little loony jigs putting in some work, but check them out. They've been spitting up a bunch of squid on me. So that's what they're eating are these small little squid hanging around. But we're gonna keep on fishing. Just wanted to stop and show you again, which these jigs are actually very versatile. You can actually cut off some of that Spanish belly and put it on there, which I may do that here and try that out. You can bounce them on the bottom for flounder or you can twitch them like I'm doing and catch anything that's small and schooling up like this. Let's try some Spanish belly on there since it's shiny and adds a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna take this little belly strip I did. I'll, I cut off this Spanish mackerel, hook it through there one time. That's a great little bait and it adds a little bit of scent and some more flash to it. So we're gonna try that. on the jig with the belly strip. He kind of hit it halfway down. Still haven't seen any color yet. There he is. Hmm. Is he foul hooked? Yeah. <laughs> they always fight harder when they're foul hooked. Gotcha. It's a fish chew down today. This is pretty much instant action. Ooh. Oh, on the belly strip. See, he stayed hooked this time. There we go. So if we can bring this up, this will be number 10. I love making ceviche out of fresh Spanish mackerel. Fried Spanish mackerel is good. Really, no way, no wrong way of cooking them. As long as you keep them fresh. Great way to break in a new to me reel. 
So this is a little pin 712 picked up for 45 bucks from a good friend of mine, Pompano Joe Real Works. And you know, it may not be the prettiest thing, but this thing's over 30 years old and still going strong catching fish. It's noisy, it's not smooth like a Daiwa, but it is a workhorse. Literally one screw, you can use a penny to open up that side cap if you wanted to and service it. Throw some grease in there and you're good to go. But if you hear that clicking sound every time I reel, if you turn it off, you that's your anti-reverse switch. And uh, there's no clicking, but you also reel backwards, which is kind of a technique not really used much anymore. So I keep that anti-reverse switch on. Oh, he jumped right out of the water. <laughs> he skied on that thing. Yeah, that is awesome. This is number 11 in the cooler. So you never know what you're gonna see out here. There's a green sea turtle. Check that out. Beautiful little thing coming up for air. There's a lot of them out here. You always wanna be cognizant of the wildlife. Make sure he doesn't get in your lines, but he got him some oxygen. Now he's gonna go back down. Those are always cool. Oh, <laughs> there we go. There's like four or five of them that come up and just smash it. And this was the unlucky one. I ended up getting the hook end of it. Mm. Yeah, it is. There you are. Mm. Another Spanish on the loony jig. Did he foul hook himself? I think so. I may unhook this one. Yeah. We're going to keep him because he's going to bleed out and die, but pretty little fish. Check it out. Add him to our limit. I'll have 13 Spanish mackerel. I'm allowed 15. Check those out. You want to make sure you bleed them out good. I usually cut right here. Take a cut just under the gills right there. See that? And they'll bleed out. Great. And then you bury them in this ice, which I do after the fact. I like to lay that ice on top and then so I can keep up with how many I have. And then when I'm done, I'm going to fill that up with water and pour that ice all over. And they'll be the freshest fish that you can catch. I don't think you can get much prettier than this. Springtime in the Florida Gulf Coast. Not too far away from my home. It's about an hour drive over here to Navarre Pier. But it's crowded today. Plenty of fish to go around. I got a nice, cool, full Spanish mackerel. That is awesome. I absolutely love catching them. Now, these Spanish mackerel are different than like the ones that you may catch if you're from Australia or New Zealand. I know y'alls are much bigger, similar to our king mackerel. Tried for kings, didn't get any, but at least I had some fun. So I'm gonna have these jigs on my website if you wanna pick them up, these little white jigs. They're one of my favorite ways of fishing out here. I always like to have one tied up or a spoon. But let me go over my setup again. My main setup was this Pin 712Z. It's practically a 4,000 size reel with 20 pound braid. A Star Aerial seven foot medium heavy fast action rod. And then I did a double uni from my braid to my leader. And I'm using 50 pound mono leader, about two foot of it to this half ounce white jig. Super awesome day of fishing. I've got some fish to clean at home, but I appreciate y'all for watching as always. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like seeing videos like this, go smash that subscribe. The channel's constantly growing. It's amazing. Appreciate each and every one of you. And I love sharing these experiences with all of y'all. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Most importantly, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see y'all later.